Hello and welcome. Um, as always, you can tap the subscribe button down below to subscribe to the channel and you can also tap the little bell to be notified when there is a new episode of Ollie's Farm. So what are we up to today? What's wrong on the farm today is the question um, because here we've got the JCB, as you can see, and there's nothing actually wrong with the JCB. Um, rather, uh, something is wrong with the attachment on the JCB, which is the bale spike. Um, as you can see below the main spike, the one uh, on the bottom, this one here, has actually broken off. So what I've actually gone and done today is I've gone down to Sutton, which is a local agricultural machinery company, and I've bought a new bale spike here. So this is a replacement spike to go onto um, the bottom there of that single bale spike. Now, the reason as to why we use um, only a single bale spike on this JCB is that actually it's really handy for loading the feeder bedder. The single spike is quite narrow and it's really nice for when you're loading the ramp. So that's the reason as to why we only use a single bale spike. I know some of you guys have been asking me about that as to why we use only a single spike. Well, that is actually the reason as to why we only use a single spike. Now, whilst I was at Sutton this morning, um, which is the agricultural machinery um, attachments company near Norwich, um, I was actually given a brochure here and I've been looking through the brochure um, and there's actually some really nice attachments which they make, which I didn't realise Sutton made. I will actually go and find now the attachment um, which I was really interested in. Th this is one attachment here which I'm really interested in, which is like a, a double um, bale handler. And as you can see, it's got twin spikes there and it's also as well got some covers so that you can operate it um, with silage bales, wrapped silage bales. So I think if any of, of these attachments would be um, purchase for the farm I think this one would definitely be one to look at when we start making our own silage. So that's enough of shopping let's have a look at this bale spike and let's try and uh, have a go at fixing it. So using this um, set of mole grips here and an adjustable spanner I'm just going to try now and take the old spike off um, so that I can take it off and then pop the new spike in through this hole. So simply using the um, adjustable mole grips there, I was able to get the old uh, bale spike off there now. So that's the old spike, obviously, as you can see, and here's the replacement one here. So we've now just got to pop this into this hole here so that um, it can obviously, the spike can then go in uh, so that we've got the twin spikes again. Okay, so what I've done to be quite safe is I've actually dropped the JCB headstock down there. As you can see, there's clover. Dave? <laughs> Say hello to everyone. <laughs> um, as you can see, I've dropped the headstock down and what I've done is I've just angled it so that it's holding the bale spike in place, but so that the bale spike is not um, dangling in the air because it was um, fairly dangerous. So trying to be safe there. Now, here's the new bale spike. I'm just literally now going to go and just pop it into here. Okay, so I'm just gonna use an impact wrench to tighten up the, the bolt on the back there. Um, the reason I'm gonna use an impact wrench is to stop the bottom spike here from wobbling out in the future. I know you shouldn't use a chrome um, socket on a an impact gun, but um, unfortunately, this is the only size I've got in this uh, socket, so that is why I'm using a chrome um, impact socket there. Okay, so let's just get under here, and I'm just gonna pop this um, nut onto the thread here so that I can just start the process off and then literally just come in with the socket gun and just... That's literally plenty for now. And then I'll just give the, the front a good nudge. That should be good. I'll just tighten it up a bit more. I think that's not going anywhere. Yeah, that is solid on there. Okay, so that is definitely um, this little job done. I've just checked the top and it has um, definitely been tightened up and it shouldn't be going anywhere now. So I can go and drop the bale spike back across the road and it has, of course, got its second spike. The problem is, is that sometimes when um, you're on the machine, the pressure of the JCB pushing this spike down here, when you take the, at the attachment off, sometimes um, causes this bottom spike to bend. And, uh, which can then consequently cause the bottom spike to crack. And that is what happened um, in the, uh, this instance. So it's uh, all done now and uh, haven't got to worry. So I'm just gonna go and pop the bale spike back across over the road and then put the feeder bucket on ready for tomorrow morning's feed. Oh, the, sun, the sun's just come out. Um, I've actually just got a quick job to do with the bale spike. Um, I've got to go and give, um, I've got to go and give uh, the horses on the farm um, a 
bale of straw. So it's a good time to test out the replacement spike. <clears throat> <laughs> this is going to be a bit of fun to get these bales down. There we go. And I'm just going to drop the ba bale off here. There we go. Excellent. do it. Dropping the bale spike off. It's quite difficult sometimes to drop this spike off because of the bottom spike. There we go, it's just got it there. But yeah, that literally is the reason as to why the bottom spike sometimes breaks. But there we are, job done. Well, it's nice to finally see the sun out today. It's been quite cold this morning. Okay, so out of the workshop and let's go and see how the calves are. Before we just go and see the calves, here's the livestock trailer here, which has been busy with the John Deere 6930 whilst I've been away at the um, AD plant. Um, Dad's been carting cattle from the farm here to the marshes using the um, stock box on the back there. So that's why um, I haven't been able to film any of the cattle going out. Um, the 6930 as well is off the feeder bedder now because obviously with a lot of the cattle being out, um, we don't need the um, feed, feeding machine on now. Um, the, the small, the few remaining cattle which are on the farm, including my calves and um, also some Belgian blues over here, um, they are um, just being fed um, with silage by hand. So it's not really worth having the feeder bedder on at the moment. Um, that's why the, um, the feeder bedder has been taken off of the tractor. This tractor though has just gone over its um, service requirement. Uh, over its service limit should I say um, which is just over 250 hours from its last service so it's got to um, be serviced and I'm hoping to do that this weekend because I've ordered the, the service kit um, which is on the way for it and I've also as well just had to order some um, back-end transmission oil as well um, before I can actually do the service on the 6930 there. So here are the Belgian Blues and as you can see I'm really happy with how they've been progressing, how they've been growing. Um, they're looking really well and they're really enjoying um, lying down in the sun here at the moment. They've been really enjoying that over the past few days. So um, here they are. This is um, one of my favourite actually. She's become very very friendly 659 here. Out, but they're really progressing well and they are growing very very quickly indeed. Um, here's the rest of the crew here coming around now. Um, as you can see, 659 is literally like very, very tame now, um, which is which is quite funny because to, be, to begin with, all oh, clovers just joined the party. Um, to begin with, they weren't 659 wasn't actually that tame. Um, so it is surprising how some can actually what she found over there. Um, it is surprising how some of the, the calves here um, have actually progressed and how some of them have tamed up um, more than others. As you can see, they've all um, run over to see Clover and see what she's up to. So yes, there they are. There are the calves, all looking quite well. And uh, I'm really happy with how they're coming along. So moving on and it's back to the 135. Now the 135, I had out the other day to, for the McDonald's run, which was quite a laugh. Um, now, what I've actually got to do with the 135 here as well, um, just like the 6930, is it's actually due an oil change uh, and a good service. So what I've got to do is change all of the filters on it, change the engine oil, and also change the back end oil as well, um, because it hasn't been changed for some time. Um, and I know it doesn't really do that many hours, but it's been quite a few years um, since it was actually last serviced. So it wouldn't hurt, it's not gonna hurt, I don't think, to give it a good service, um, just to keep it in good order and to keep it ticking over nicely. Um, because in the future, this is a tractor um, which I would actually like to fully restore. So 
Um, to keep it running well, as you can see, look at the, if you just look at these filters here, you can see they're actually getting on quite a bit and they are quite old. So it does want a good, good service. So that is uh, another job coming up soon as well. Um, and also if you just look at the old um, 434 over there, the McCormick's been quite busy this winter doing the scraping out. So that as well will also need um, the engine oil changing on that because it hasn't actually been changed since last season as well. So there we go, guys. That is what I've been up to on the farm. And there's some jobs um, which I've got to do um, coming up in the next few weeks, obviously with the servicing of the John Deere, the 135, the scraper tractor, and as well, what I didn't tell you about was the JCB. It definitely wants a good clean off um, and it wants looking after as well. So that's also um, got to be uh, dealt with as well as uh, everything else. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. Um, tomorrow I'm off to go and hopefully see a, uh, a tractor. It's a lovely, lovely high spec German tractor. So. Today's challenge is can you guess what I'm up to tomorrow for an Ollie's Farm um, tractor review? So do comment below what you think the tractor is, which I'm going to be reviewing tomorrow, um, because I would love to hear from you guys. And if you guess the tractor right, you'll be in for a chance for a shout out. So do get guessing in the comment section below, guess what tractor I'll be reviewing tomorrow. So ho I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, do tap the subscribe button down below, and you can also tap the little bell to be notified when there is a new episode of Ollie's Farm. And as always, do comment, rate and subscribe for plenty more videos to come.